Yo, what is poppin' people? It's your boy Out of Order. Welcome back to the channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got ourselves a banger tutorial here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you everything you need to know about glitch effects, the types of glitches there are, how to do them, and all that sort of stuff. So, before the video starts, I just want to make an announcement that I finally released my editing pack. This editing pack contains presets for everything I'm going to show in this video, and it's only $9 if you use the code PEPSYSNAIL. Link to it will be in the description. Make sure to go check it out below, guys. I also appreciate you guys for supporting the channel if you do decide to purchase it. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to DM me. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. So, I have a really basic clip right here. It's nothing too crazy. It's just some Black Ops 1 footage. Um, I recorded this in 600 fps i know a lot of people do 1200 nowadays but like i don't know i stick to 600 we got some depth layers we got the green screen and then we got the world layer now keep in mind guys you don't need these type of clips to do what i'm going to teach you in this video any clip will work i just prefer editing clips that have z depth because you can do more effects on them but any clip will work for glitch effects so the first type of glitch I'm going to cover right now are shake glitches. So shake glitches are pretty nice because you can put them on your shots and impacts. And honestly, it just makes the edit a lot better. If you're going for a glitch style, that is, because obviously you're not going to want to use glitch effects on any edit because, you know, it'll probably take away from it sometimes. Like a hardcore edit, I know. If the song has some glitchy stuff in it, you know, you can do it. But personally, I don't think red CCs go good with glitch effects. But anyway, guys, I'm going to show you how to make the shake glitch. So we're just going to make an adjustment layer right here, uh, and I'm just going to put the adjustment layer on top of the uh, clips right here. And then I'm going to add a marker here by pressing the asterisk key. So yeah, once you create an adjustment layer with the marker on it, we're just going to add the effect called S-Shake. Now, if you don't have S-Shake, you will need to get Sapphire plugins. It's a plugin pack that comes with, you know, basically everything you need. I don't know why you wouldn't have Sapphire because I feel like everyone has Sapphire nowadays. But in case you don't have Sapphire, I recommend getting it. But what we're going to do here now is we're going to change the settings here. So I always tick on motion blur because motion blur on your shakes is just so much better so after you enable motion blur you're gonna want to play with the frequency settings and this completely depends on your style of editing that you're going for um sometimes i use a frequency of two sometimes i go even as high as an eight sometimes it all depends on what you're doing um usually i like to keep it around two or three i feel like that's the best shake settings see it's not too strong and uh once you do that you're gonna want to enable tilt shake down here make sure you go down into tilt shake and then tilt random amplitude you can make that like basically anything from like 10 to like 30 i'd say and as you guys can see it basically adds tilt to your edit and uh that's pretty cool and all another thing i like to do here is change the seed because the default seed i feel like you can easily tell you know it's the default seed so make sure you change the seed all the time now if you want the glitch look to your shakes you're gonna need to go down into the channel section and then mess around with all these amplitudes right here these are essentially your rgb splittings um yeah so you can just mess around with these you don't don't go too high because if you go too high you'll notice that your shake will just look absolutely insane so i don't recommend going that high i'd say stick to like the low numbers you can also change the rgb randomness and the rgb frequency if you want but uh once you do everything once you have all your shake settings set right so you do the tilt shake you do the channels you do the seed motion board you know all that good stuff you can also enable z shake i forgot to point that out i should have said that earlier but you can also do z shake if you want i don't recommend z shake that often a lot of editors don't really like it but it is there if you do like it and now it's time to animate this so to animate it we're just going to make a keyframe um we're gonna make the default value around one or two it depends on how much shake you want if you want a lot of shake like a huge shake you can increase this as much as you want although that'll probably look absolutely terrible but uh we're just gonna do a basic shake so i'll do around two we'll do an amplitude of two and then down here we'll do an amplitude of zero so it'll start off zero go to two and then it'll end on zero again so we're gonna copy and paste the zero keyframe and then select all the keyframes, press F9. And then we're gonna go into the graph editor here. 
And then for the graph editing, you're just going to want to make your shake look something like this. It all depends on your edit, however. So sometimes you want to do different shakes. I don't usually use the same shake on each shot. I always do different shakes for each shot. But uh, this right here is typically what my shakes normally look like. So as you guys can see, the shake came out pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. I really like this shake. You can always mess with the settings too. So if I want more green amplitude or red amplitude or whatever the hell I want, you know, you can increase the values here. So yeah, you can basically just customize your shake to, you know, whatever looks best for you. So that was a pretty cool glitch effect, but you guys are probably wondering what other glitch effects can we do? Well, another cool effect that a lot of editors use for glitch, I don't even use this for glitch entirely. I use this on my normal edits too. Um, it's Video Copilot's Twitch. So I added Twitch to my adjustment layer, and here we can just check boxes that we want. So if we want a slide Twitch, we can add that. If we want scale Twitches or light Twitches or color Twitches or, you know, border Twitches, even time Twitches. I rarely do time Twitches because I feel like those just come out really weird. But yeah, this is essentially what Twitch looks like. Obviously, it's not that cool. I mean, we haven't messed with the settings yet. So to do that, we're going to go down into operator controls and slide if you want that glitch look you can add rgb splitting to it however i don't really recommend doing this since honestly these effects kind of look they're a bit overused and a little bit cheesy if you know what i mean but nevertheless it is there if you want it and making twitches is kind of the same for doing glitch shakes uh you can keyframe the amount and then make it zero at the start uh make it around whatever you want at the impact and then make it zero at the end again and then F9, the keyframes, and then we're just gonna make it look something like this. And here we go. And this is what it looks like. I think it looks pretty nice actually with the settings like this. It's not too overwhelming like how we had it at the beginning, but it is pretty nice. Now we're gonna talk about three frame glitches or two frame glitches. Now these are effects that some people either love or hate. I personally don't really care about them. I don't really use them that often, but three frame glitches are essentially just, you know, glitches that last three frames. And to do three frame glitches, it's a little bit different. You know, it's not just like adding some basic shake and then just keyframe and amplitude. These ones you gotta actually get a little creative with. So for three frame glitches, uh, a popular effect a lot of editors use is pix dither. Now pix dither is one of my favorite effects for doing three frame glitches. This one, you can actually just go here, pattern. I usually use horizontal eight by one. Or you can do something like this one or this one. You can just mess around with the settings here until you get something nice. But I'm going to use horizontal 8x1. And then for the palette here, we're just going to add a keyframe on the first frame. Go to the next one. Pick a different setting. Go to the next frame. And then pick another one. So this is what it should look like. So once you do pix dither, another effect that I like to combine with this is S scan lines. I know scan lines are really disliked by people. They say, oh, scan lines ruin edits. But uh, honestly, I don't really care at this point. <laughs> you know, anything can really ruin an edit if you think about it. But uh, we're just going to add some S scan lines here. And then you can just mess around with the lines frequency and the sharpness. So here are my S scan line settings. I usually put the frequency around 80, the sharpness around 6. And then the noise, I usually increase this a little bit. And the uh, same with the frequency. I also lower that all the way so you get this color effect. And it should look something like this. Now the last effect we're going to add onto this adjustment layer is Bad TV by Robite. And then for Bad TV, the settings I like to use are make sure to put it to manual, increase the signal distortion a little bit, and the scan distortion as well, until you get something that looks nice. Now for glitch editing, you typically don't want the same effect to like be visible on all frames. You want it to, you want to switch it up for each frame. So we're just going to make the scan distortion, you know, like 40% on the first frame. And then we'll go to the next frame, we can turn it off. And then the last frame, we can increase that up to about 100. So this is what it looks like so far. As you can see, it's pretty nice. I actually really like it. But we're not done yet. So the next thing I like to do, especially for three frame glitches, is I like to mess around with the scale and I like to do some masking. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this part off into this little section right here. We're going to duplicate the layer again. We're going to cut it in half as well. And then we're going to do something like mask a box around the gun. You know, just something simple. Masking an object. It could be a player, a box, just any object really. Just you want to mask something. 
uh, make sure it's duplicated, of course, once it's above the other layer, and you're just going to want to mess with the scale on it until you get something like this. And then the next thing I like to do is I like to change the blending mode to, let's see, I usually do different, and you will get something that looks like this, actually. Now, if it's too much for you, you can, of course, lower the opacity until you get something that you like, but that's usually what I do for three frame glitches. So we're gonna disable the soloing, and we're gonna preview this and see how it comes out. So honestly, this came out pretty sick. And the cool thing about this is you can actually combine this with the other glitch effects I taught you earlier in the tutorial. But uh, yeah, that's how to do three frame glitches. Now we're going to be talking about Z depth glitch effects. Hey, I don't wanna suck up, up on your Uber. Fingers be it, you wanna end up with the future. End up in the middle of a bar. Now there are a few different effects you can use for Z depth glitches, but uh, typically the one that I most commonly see people use is S Distort RGB, except instead of blurring the lens down to something like this, you're gonna wanna increase it extremely high until you get something that looks like this. Once you do that, another thing I like to do is I like to add a normal shake on here. And another thing I like to do is put the red and green channels at one and enable tilt shake, and then just make the amplitude really small, but the frequency, at like three or something and then i just don't keyframe the amplitude and i just re let it run throughout the whole clip and then the last effect i like to add is s flicker now i usually put the frequency super high and the amplitude at around 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 that's usually what i go for and this is the result so as you can see it's a pretty trippy background with some shaking and some flickering and honestly i think this looks super cool and that was my tutorial on how to do glitches if you enjoyed it leave a like and subscribe if you're new here also guys if you have any questions feel free to comment down below and i'll try and answer as many as i can i left a few things out such as glitchify but glitchify could be its own video and i already have an old tutorial on how to do glitchify but uh, i'll probably remake some of my old tutorials so yeah but anyway guys that's the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed drop a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new also be sure to check out my editing pack in the description down below it contains everything i showed in this tutorial and more including some glitchify stuff so if you're interested in that be sure to check it out in the description down below but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video it's been out of order and i'll catch you in the next one guys peace